Well, good morning. I'm so excited to be here this morning, so excited to be back in the United States of America. So, wow. Um, I'm fired up this morning so much. Oh, gosh, just what a great past few weeks it's been. I heard you guys had some awesome services here, so that's exciting. And uh, if you are a person who loves Bible prophecy, this is a day you ought to do some research on. It comes out of Psalm 118. It's the fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy, chapter 9 of the 70 weeks. It is the most profound prophetic day in all of human history, Palm Sunday. If you understand what happened on this day, you are able to put the Old Testament and the New Testament together. You understand the Gospels better. It explains why Jesus, when he healed people, he would say, don't tell anybody. Does that ever bother you when you read the Gospels? He'd heal them and he'd say, don't tell anybody. He'd be like, what do you mean don't tell anybody? But he was waiting for Palm Sunday. Psalm 118, this is the day. On Palm Sunday, Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Daniel when Daniel said, from the going forth of the command to rebuild Jerusalem until the coming of of your Messiah. He gave him an exact date, 483 years. You can find the date in Nehemiah, the date that the command was given. You go 483 years later, guess what day it is? Palm Sunday. That's why Jesus said to the Pharisees, they said, they're calling you the Messiah. Tell them to stop. He said, listen, if they didn't do it, the rocks would cry out because he said, it's the day. This is the day. So, man, it's a big day. It is a big day. It is the day of the public unveiling of the Messiah who was Jesus Christ. Only Jesus could have ever fulfilled it. There is no other Messiah. He fulfilled the prophecy. Daniel spoke it, and he did it 483 years later. So, wow, what a great day. So, uh, yeah, what a, couple, a bunch of stuff I want to do this morning. Try to move really fast. Try not to keep you here too long, but there's just so much cool stuff. Uh, first of all, on top of it being Palm Sunday, I want to say a special thank you to everyone who was part of yesterday's extravaganza. Could you just stand up if you were part of that? Everybody who helped out yesterday, just stand up for a second here. So many people helping out, cooking, serving, helping with the children, you know, cleaning up organizing, planning. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. You, you made us proud and, and you've got the right heart. It's serving. It's blessing our church family, young families with children. It's blessing the community. Uh, it's just sharing the love of Christ. And what a great event it was yesterday. That, that is a first class event. Kim and your entire committee. Where's Kim at? Where's Kim? Awesome job. Kim, wow. First class, very good, just awesome. Thank you so much. So really great job and get ready for Easter week. You know, we're doing the uh, Via Della Rosa walk starting Friday night, City Hall walking out here. We have a Friday night, Good Friday service and preparing for Easter Sunday. So uh, it makes for a great week. All right, so yeah, I want to do a couple different things this morning. Uh, not, not really a sermon of sorts, more like testimonies and then I'll share Hopefully we get some time toward the end. I want to share just like a personal heart revelation I got out of a passage of scriptures that really has profoundly affected me and I think has profoundly affected our, our Vietnam outreach. And uh, so we're going to bring the team up here in just a minute and give them each a chance like they get like 30 seconds or 20 seconds or 45 seconds. And uh, Yeah, right, you know how it goes. So I'll bump them when they go a little too long. But I want you to hear some of these stories, see some of these pictures. They're just just fantastic trip. And, and, and I, I just, you know, there's things, it, it is, doing a mission trip, first of all, any mission trip is a great spiritual adventure. But this is a unique spiritual adventure. We are going into truly dark, hostile territory. This is a communist country that Christianity is still illegal. It is monitored very strictly, and we are making major inroads there. And it's just so incredible uh, you know, we've been doing this a number of years, but I, this has only been my second trip, and I, I have to tell you, it's, it has truly become a highlight of my life. It's, it's one of those bright spots where I just think, wow, I feel like my life's making a real difference, and this is definitely part of it. But what I really like about this is I really felt connected to all of you as we were doing this. This is truly a family event. We delivered your chairs that you purchased last year. We delivered them and put people in them, and we represented you. We, we were there on your behalf, and we put people in these chairs, and we prayed for them, and it was like, man, 
you know, what a great thing. We get to do this as a team, as a family, and it was just an outstanding, an outstanding event. So uh, what I'd like to do at this time, if you're uh, here this morning for our Vietnam team, would you all just come on up and stand up in front here? I'm going to show some pictures and give each of you a chance to just explain some of the pictures. Just line right up here. We had uh, 21 people. Yeah, just line up right, it's right across the front here. So we had 21 people come from the U.S. to be on this team. You can see there. And then there were eight other pastors, uh, Vietnamese pastors, uh, led by Pastor Vu. So there was actually 30 of us uh, doing this outreach. So each time we showed up, 30 people showed up in these communities and did these outreaches. And man, it was incredible. So that's a picture our first morning. And we hit the ground running. I think we got into that hotel 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and closed our eyes and then woke up at 5 a.m., had our morning devotion at 5.30, breakfast at 6, on the road 6.30, and hustle, man, hustle. We don't need to sleep on this, right? This is not a vacation. Wow, wow, absolutely incredible schedule. This, this is not for the weary. You know, if you're ever thinking of doing this, you, you, you first of all, you've got to be committed, but then you just have to be flexible every day. It's like, well, what happened now? Okay, this got switched, that got switched, we're doing this, now we're doing that, but... We're just there to serve, man, and it was just so much fun. So what I'm going to do is uh, kind of call one of you out at a time, and I've got a couple pictures that kind of match your stuff. So uh, let's start with Mike. Mike, why don't you come out? And uh, Mike Rechtashel was able to do something special this year. What, what's the picture about there, Mike? Okay, so uh, this year we got to uh, also represent Luke's Brigade um, in Vietnam. So this is a picture of uh, one of the exercises that we went through with uh, the students there. And so they shipped in, I think it was 20 pastors from the various uh, outlying areas, and uh, we taught them first aid. And uh, the incredible thing about this, I called this an E320. Yeah, tell about this um, interpreter here. Yeah. So, you know, the e Ephesians 3.20 says, To him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or even think. And so I'm there. I'm like, well, I'm not so sure about this. I don't speak Vietnamese. I don't know how this is going to go. And uh, there, there was this young man who was there who was, uh, he also spoke English, and he was the son of the chief of police or something like that. Yes, he was. Yeah. And not this a Christian. young man not only spoke English, but he also had some training in first aid. So, what, so what, you know, not, not even first aid, but he had um, scientific training or whatever. So, you know, I asked Vu, well, he's like, tell me uh, one of the words, you know, some of the words that you're going to use so that I can look them up and see what it is. And I said, resuscitate. And he goes, huh? <laughs> so, so this young man, though, I'm like, uh, CPR. He goes, oh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Okay. Absolutely, that's it, you know. And uh, so then I'm going through the training, and we're going over uh, the training for how to treat sprains. And there's an acronym that we use. And I say, uh, you know, in the, in the ski patrol, we use this acronym. It's called RICE. And he goes, oh, RICE, rest, ice, compression, elevation. <laughs> what? And so, so it was a total blessing. And, you know, this class on, on, on that first day went far beyond better than, than I could have, could have even imagined it would have gone. Awesome. Well, so this is brand new, brand new, and uh, we'll have to see what happens next year, but this is a new thing that we're doing, adding medical training, which they absolutely need over there, right? So mm -hmm. we'll be praying about this next year and see what happens. Thanks, Mike. And I got to eat organic, free-range, grain-fed rats. Okay, yeah. It that, was awesome. Yeah, okay. But that's a special part of the presentation here today. I think we brought some for everybody or something. You can taste it. No. So, so after Mike, Mike uh, was here early with Bob and Jenny. They were there a couple days early. Then, uh, then the team shows up, and we jump right into it, like I said, right and early. We showed up Wednesday or Thursday morning, like I said, 3 a.m. We were on the road 6.30 Thursday morning, and we were distributing, I think, by 9.30. So, but we have to go fast, so I wanted to show you how fast we are able to work. That's how we do it. <laughs> Hurry up! Hurry up! Come on, man! We got to get these chairs down, you know, so, you know, we don't fool around. This is, uh, this is like after two drinks of five-hour energy, and... Uh, that's the, uh, the Gen 2 chair. I don't know how long it takes. Henry probably knows. How long does it take to put one of those together, Henry? Mike knows. How long does it take to put one together? It takes a good 15, 20 minutes to put a chair together. 
15, 20 minutes, but they're, they're doing it in a minute. So that's right there. There you go. So, so, that's, so uh, Bob, let's have Bob share a little bit. So Bob was able to, uh, I think Bob, uh, got a picture of Bob putting one together, and I think you were able to do it like in less, right? You're faster. You're one of the fast. We, we do ours in about six minutes. Six minutes. Yeah, that's what I was good. thinking. Yeah, yeah. Bob, Bob, that's like an assembly line there, but actually they're all working on different chairs on a long table. But sometimes we had tables. A lot of times you're working on the ground. Uh, but there's Bob putting a chair together. But there's another picture here of Bob, and he looks a little nervous in this picture. He's holding Jenny because we're crossing rivers nonstop, ferries, and that's a, that's a river taxi. And there's Bob holding Jenny, and you're thinking, why is Bob, why does he look a little nervous there? Well, there's another picture that will help you see. This that, is like standing up in a canoe. That's the flooring of the boat right yeah. there that we're standing on. And upper left-hand corner, see the little lady bending down? That's the owner of the boat. She's bailing water out because it's sinking. Am I, am I exaggerating or what? Is she, she is bailing water out. And We're so, going across, and Mike is going, Bob, this thing's sinking. It's sinking. It's sinking. She, I mean, Bob, the water coming in. I'm going, <laughs> He's holding see Jenny. It. <laughs> She's bailing. A Pastor Booth's rowing. He's like, this is crazy. This, this is, is nuts. This is nuts here. Yeah, so there's Bob's uh, little journey across the river. How about Jenny? Let's bring a picture of Jenny up here. Now, Jenny, what's this about here? Oh, it was a little girl, and... She had been in bed her whole life, and her mother brought her there in a crate or something. And yeah, there's a picture of some of the I, ways. It show that this is the way some of them come. That's not the one, but that's the way some of them show yes, up. Yes, yeah. it, it was, and that was pretty amazing just to set her in the chair. And she was, her limbs are so deformed, and it's the um, Agent Orange that does that, and it's still in the ground there. And so there are many, many children that's uh, and if you notice the blue chair now it can be made bigger four times so they try to give those to the children or the adults that are so deformed that they can't just sit in a white yeah, chair yeah yeah really, but it really was um, it was our best trip it was our sixth trip and our best one God just would do something every day better than he did the day before I mean this uh, Buddhist monk walked up to me and said can I take your picture mm. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. And then he went to Pastor Vu um, and asked him if he could have a chair. So now Promised Land Ministries and Vineyard Ministries is going into a monastery, a monk which has never going to ever happen before. Yep. So, yep. I mean, he's just opening all kinds of doors. What, one more cool picture here. you got to see this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you know why I put that up there? Bob and Jenny are celebrating their 50th anniversary um, now, now, now I just I want to tell you something if you ever want to be like somebody when you grow up these people celebrating their 50th anniversary are doing this mission trip incredible you folks are incredible you're, you you're incredible. all come you all come. we're gonna have a party and all you have to do is let me know you want to come it's in August, and we'll announce it again. But yeah. everybody's welcome. Yeah. They, they, what an awesome honor to be serving with Bob and Jenny on a mission trip. They're just absolutely Next incredible. year, you can come and have a shirt just like this. Yeah, you get a shirt just like that. All right, so let's see. Henry, Hen so here's a picture of Henry. And uh, so Henry does kind of hold the world record for the fastest wheelchair assembly. And, uh, you know, he's, he tries not to be proud about it. But uh, th th there's another picture here. 90 Henry. seconds. He is very humble. <laughs> This picture, show this, that this is incredible. This, this is the adjusting after the chairs are put together. What happens, Henry? We put the chairs together, then what happens? Well, um, as you see in the picture, her leg is shorter backwards. The other one is going the other way. So uh, we try to get, uh, and the chairs are really close together. So we try to get in there to make the adjustments on their, uh, the things that hold their feet up. And um, you, you can tell they're, they're shocked. They're either one time, the guy was kissing me on my head, and I called Vu over. I said, what's going on here? You know, um, That was the one that he said he was on the ground 40 years, and we just took him out, and he now became a human, he said. People have talked to me. So things like this, this, we put them in the chairs. This is the next step that just blows their minds, that we would get down on our knees to try to fix those for them. Mm. Um, so that's awesome. Yeah. Um, if, if I can uh, talk about the lady from... Or you better have somebody what got that at the end? Oh. Yep. Okay. All uh, right. Awesome. But, all right. Yeah. So Henry. All right. So Ivana stepped forward. So Ivana, Ivana was there, and uh, I was telling Ivana I was so glad she came this year because she finally showed Henry how to do the chairs correctly. 
He may be fast, but you know, wheels are in the wrong. So Ivana, thank you. You really, really showed up here. Uh, just a couple thoughts about putting them together this year. Oh, it, it was really, uh, it's, it's a blessing to do that because you know that every bolt you put in is just going to bless someone. And this year I also got to put a blue chair together and Mike here showed me how to do that and that was great now too. Now you stepped it yeah, up. So I stepped it up a okay. little bit, yes. And so <laughs> you didn't get to go to this, but there was a baptism that happened. We've got a picture here. So tell a little bit about the baptism that happened here. Yeah, that was Kong's church that yeah. was doing a baptism. And I was, I was going to go, but then it was supposed to be Henry, Larry, and Wu. So, and then two other men came, and I said, I think I'll just it's get back. It's a guy thing, yeah. It's a guy thing, so I went shopping with the ladies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but a pretty cool thing. Henry, what, you know, just yeah. a little bit about that Henry, baptism there. Pretty cool. This was, uh, the, right next door is his house. This was his shrimp pond where he raised his shrimp. It's his shrimp pond. So Larry had these flip-flops. He goes in, he sinks down about three and a half feet in the mud. So that's, so now they're kind of stuck. The two girls come in, they're stuck. And uh, they, you're going to show the picture how they dunk them? Or? No, that's no. Just a, yeah. Okay, they dunk them forward, and it looks like they're drowning them when they pull them out. So uh, we got to pray over them. We're trying to get him out, and the shrimp between the ponds is a 12-inch path. So you're standing on top of the path. We're linking together trying to pull Larry out of the mud. And I thought, if he pops, we're all going into the other pod. <laughs> but that's the way they design out there. You, that's their baptism, using the shrimp pond. So pretty cool, though. These are two kids, not really. One was a mom. But the young girl uh, getting saved, and now they want to get baptized. That's Very awesome. Nice. Very nice. Yep. All right. So uh, there's some other pictures. Sanford's not here at Sanford Senior. There's a... Uh, these are the pastors who worked with us. There's actually eight of them. They pastor churches all around Vietnam. These guys are awesome. They, they are just incredible servants. They come to work. This is Olivia. She, uh, Olivia Bosworth, she's not here this morning, but she uh, helped with the children and was her first trip. What a great young lady. Wish she could share this morning. And there's our team that uh, painted a school. That was a great day. Uh, the school was unbelievably dirty and in really bad shape. And just before we left, I had to leave them a little message. Can you read that? See, uh, it says, this room painted with Jesus' love. That's illegal there. I didn't sign it, and I left. <laughs> School was out on Sunday. When they went in on Monday, I'm hoping it was still there. Uh, that's all communist propaganda above that, and the picture of um, Ho Chi Minh above that's all you know, their stuff, but man, you know, we represented Jesus, and as much as we could, we did it, so we painted that school on Sunday, uh, so uh, this is Sanford Jr., this is, I forget how many trips he's been on, but he's putting a chair together with Mike, and putting a young person in a chair as well, that uh, again, happened pretty regular at every distribution, how to put him in the chairs, so uh, here's Leslie, here's Leslie right here, so here's Leslie on your first trip, Leslie, what was it like, first impressions of doing this? It was an amazing experience, and I thought I knew what poverty looked like. What's that? I, I thought I knew what poverty looked like, because my parents are both from Eastern Kentucky, so I thought I had an idea. I was wrong. I was really wrong. You saw poverty. Yeah. Lots. Yeah, yeah. If, if there's ever a benefit to going on a mission trip, that is one of them. You just, you can't even put it in words. No, no. But you have a picture here standing next to this. What is this? Well, the the two-room school that we painted had a cabinet in each room, and they were rickety old cabinets, and as the guys were moving one of them, it just broke, the the, le the feet on it just broke completely, and, you know, I felt bad. We, we didn't mean to break it, but we couldn't leave them without a cabinet, so I gave Vu some money and said, can we buy him a new cabinet? So that's the new cabinet. Within an hour? We, yeah. He I mean, where did it come from? I don't know. Uh, it's an island. Yeah, There's no... I, I don't know where that thing came it from. It showed up on the back of a, of a motorcycle. <laughs> on the back of a moped kind of thing, like, what? <laughs> Within an hour or so, like, all right. But, yeah, what a, what a cool thing about that school, uh, Leslie. Just, you know, was it was a wonderful thing. I wish we could have been there Monday to see the children. Yeah. It was really yeah. incredible. So thank you, Leslie. Uh, Roxana, come up here, Roxana. So uh, this is Roxana's first trip, and there's a picture. What's going on in the picture there, Rox? Oh, I got to share uh, my testimony I told a story about growing up and um, being, um, how my grandma told me as a child about Jesus, and so I used a story so that they could kind of relate to it. Um, and what's 
So you're doing in English, and then what's happening? And then so. Pastor Vu is sharing in Vietnamese. Yep. So at each distribution, so. somebody got to preach. Yeah. And we preach Jesus to them. Yep. Which is not yep. really legal, and Pastor Vu gets nervous, and I totally understand that. We, we try to really be respectful. You know, it's not a joke. It isn't really a joke. It's really illegal. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, we tell them about Jesus. We tell them these chairs are given to you in Jesus' name. So, but it was special for us, Roxanna. Why was it, why was it so special this year for us? Oh, man? especially because our daughter and her husband uh, came from Chicago and joined us. And then our other son, Christopher, joined us from San Francisco. So it was like a big family it was thing awesome. um, t for us being all together. Yeah. And, and, for, just and then one last thing, you got to deliver a chair right there. Where'd that chair come from? It says from, what does it say? Read it. I can't read it. Somebody Kid read it. Zone. From Kid Zone. That's yeah, a, Kid, Kid Zone. Purchased by Kid Yoo Zone. All year long, the kids are saving their money in the back. And so next week, we'll all bring it, uh, the kids will all bring yep. it up from Kid Zone. They purchased for that our chair. We delivered it. We prayed over it. Somebody sending mm -hmm. in it today in Jesus' name. Yes. So awesome. Thanks, Roxana. Mm -hmm. So Stephen, a pair of, what's up, Stephen? He lost his shirt probably, huh? <laughs> Rebel. He said he wore it enough. He's not wearing it anymore. So uh, Stephen, you were there helping dad uh, fix a chair. How many, this, this is your what, second, second, trip? second trip? Second trip. Why'd you go back? Because I love it there. You love it there. <laughs> what Stephen really loved is the, uh, is the exquisite Vietnamese cuisine. What's that, Stephen? That's the field rat. That's a big old thigh. That's a big old thigh, man. <laughs> this oh, is my favorite, by the way. That was so good. I mean, that's not a joke. The best chicken Taste, I ever had. It's not a joke. That area is known for their field rats, and he said all over Vietnam, if they want to order field rats, they order them from this area. So we got from the that guy that served it right to us. there, boy. Yeah, Stephen had just enjoyed it, and then uh, I don't know, man. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> Just, I thought that was your favorite, Uncle Dave. You know, man, I, I didn't eat much meat over there at all. So, yeah. Fa soup. All right. Thanks, Stephen. Glad you were able to come. So uh, there's the last picture of our team here. This is the last distribution. Uh, I think we did 30 or so that day, uh, but that's the last picture. And uh, then that was it for us as a team. So, team, thank you. You were all awesome. Wonderful to work with you. You can all sit down, man. Thank you. So, so a couple of other thoughts here, um, just observations about Vietnam. Um, first of all, it's a crazy kind of country. It's in major transition. You go into these big cities, there's 100 million people that live in this country, 100 million. Uh, the United States, 300 million. It's one-third the population of the U.S., but it's in a, a country about the size of California. So they've got these major cities, 3 million, 5 million, brand new skyscrapers, Every city we went to in major construction, new buildings going up uh, all over the place. Big money coming into the country, big investments, billions of dollars. Switch, switch it over there, the next picture. You see every place, uh, cranes, buildings going up. But all you see are these major cities. And then once you get outside the major city, there's no such thing as suburbs. You see poverty that you can't even begin to describe. Many of these little communities on rivers, half of the house is over the uh, water because that's where they use for going to the bathroom and that's their water where they get their fresh water. I mean, the, the, the poverty is absolutely incredible. Here's a lady, she's doing her laundry wash in the, right there, the blue, blue tub she's washing and there's the house with the bathroom right over. I mean, this is, it's just unbelievable. Once you get outside the city, you go, what just happened here? Is this the same country? You have these cities and then you've got these communities, lots of these communities. And we did distributions in the cities as well as the communities. And uh, you see these houses and, and just the hygiene. This, this is unbelievable. This is a lady doing the dishes on the street, the dishes that we're eating off of in the restaurants. I'm not, a, there's the dishes. So that's why like you lose weight when you're over there. You don't want to it's unbelievable. I mean that's how you just swish it around and then you just put it on your Thing and they throw some stuff on there and you go, whoa, not really interested in that. But th there's the meat markets. Those are like intestines and pig's ears and gizzards and livers and they're out there all day. I mean, this is a, just a different kind of culture. It is just so, so unique. And then, of course, if you stop at a restaurant and you want to use a bathroom, there is the winner 
of this year's coolest bathroom. For real, right? Am I, am I, you know, I, I say this like for real, like when we prayed over our food, uh, we added the little phrase like, Jesus, please bless this food for real. Like this is not a token American prayer where you pray over your food. Please, please keep it clean. That is inside looking down through the floorboards of that bathroom. Welcome to Vietnam. I mean, they're not all like that. Like I said, in the city, they're a little bit better. But once you get outside the city, that's what you get to look at. And it's like, whoa, this place is incredible. Each distribution was unique. Some of them outside, and it's sort of like organized chaos. There's chairs. There's people everywhere. Uh, they're, sometimes they're trying to help you put the chairs together. Sometimes they're helpful. Sometimes they're not. But, of course, you can't communicate. So you're trying. They don't, many of them don't know how to use a ratchet. They've never used any of these tools. And... Uh, some of them are inside community centers, some very nice, some not very nice, but uh, all different. Some out in, you know, in, just in the sun. Sometimes you have a table to set up, sometimes you don't. But uh, people show up in all different ways, carts and different, just things that just catch you off guard. It's like, whoa, 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 man, how does this happen? And then you usually have to lift them up and put them in a chair, and uh, it is emotional. I mean, you go through some emotional trauma. This is not a joke. This is serious stuff. And not everybody is like that. You know, if you do a 50-chair ch distribution, there's maybe five or ten, but there's always crippled children who are so in need of a chair. And you just, uh, for me, I want to yell, like, what's wrong with this country? Why don't these children have chairs? You know, they don't. They, if we don't give it to them, they don't get the chair. They live their life in a cart or they live in a house, and that's all they get. But we get to put them in a chair and love on them and pray for them and bless them but man it really rips your heart up I mean it's just it, it is an emotional experience you have your highs and your lows uh, but but some other things that I uh, experiences I had because I'm from the generation of the Vietnam War so it's fresh in my mind we had friends who served over there uh, people in our community that died over there and so we're over there of all the countries in the world that I would ever go to ever Vietnam would have been the last one, but here we are in Vietnam, and every time we go, this is a Viet Cong soldier here. This lady ran munitions along the Ho Chi Minh Trail, which our bombers used to napalm bomb every night. Uh, her father, her three brothers all killed by Americans. Uh, here she is. She's wearing the North Vietnamese helmet. She, uh, her, uh, she got saved after the, after the war, and now she's part of Pastor Vu's ministry. She's co-leading one of the churches, and she's eating lunch with us. And I'm thinking, 40 years ago, you would kill me, and I would kill you. People I know, we were bitter enemies, and now we're friends. This is just hard to grasp. I mean, it just does something to you. But she saved wonderful woman. She said we were the second American she's ever met in her life, ever met you know, touched or met an American. She lives in some remote village way far northwest in uh, Vietnam. Here's another. This is a, a Viet Cong officer during the war. He was one of the government officials. He spoke. They always have government officials speak at each distribution. I don't know what they're saying, but they say stuff. But anyway, he came over and told us a little bit about, uh, actually, that was where we ate the rats, and he was telling us, I hope we enjoy the rats. He said, that's what we ate during the war when we were in the tunnels. He said, and uh, they're very, they're very del or delicacy. And it's like, wow, man. But, but he he's our friend he is our friend and he's primarily our friend because we're giving them wheelchairs and we're doing it in Jesus name and it's like I don't know it just it does something to me it's like wow and of course we have to do Ohio you don't you don't go anywhere unless you do OHIO right you know so all right I'm gonna go through something real quick I'm, I'm gonna try to get through this but, but I just want to share with you a passage of scripture that truly opened up to me it's Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 I'll go through this really quick but this is Jesus saying, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. It gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We were getting ready on Sunday morning to have a service at Pastor Kong's church, one of the pastors working with Pastor Boo. We were all going to go to his church and have church together. Well, the religious police didn't like that that morning, and they said, No, you cannot go. Just like that. You're not going to their church. I forbid it. That's how it works over there. So Pastor Vu came up and said, we can't go. I said, well, can we have our own service in the hotel? He said, yeah, we probably have to do it not in the lobby. We have to do it in a side room. I said, fine. So I was praying about what to share, and I was kind of frustrated with the whole idea of going to Vietnam. I cannot speak that language. I've tried. I've listened to it on uh, 
YouTube, I've listened to them, try to say the words and, you know, thinking it's a way of showing respect where you say, I want to learn your language. It is an incredibly difficult language and I was trying to say words and every time I'd say a word, they would laugh. <laughs> you know, like, you know, sin chow, and they, ah, 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 you know, sin chow's like, hello, and, you know, muksoi is pastor, and they go, what, muksoi? No, I don't know what that is, and chua is God, and I had to call, you know, in Timbin or something. I, I, I couldn't do it. I got so frustrated. I, I realized that I probably sounded to them like people sound to us who are trying to speak English when you're calling them on the phone. I know you've never had that experience. Yeah, when you're getting, you know, customer service and it's somebody from India or some other place, Pakistan, they're going, and you go, I cannot understand you, you know. So I got this feeling like, you know, I'm not going to speak Vietnamese. I'm just going to speak English. But we have a language barrier. And I was praying that morning. I felt like God said, listen, I'm going to show you how to break the language barrier. I'm going to show you how you can speak a universal language. And it is right here by showing kindness, kind deeds in the love of God. And it, like, I, I mean, I know that, but now I know that. Now I understand. This is how we're breaking this barrier down. I cannot speak that language, but I can speak a universal language, and I can show them love in Jesus' name when I put them in that wheelchair, and they know I'm a Christian. They've got a cross here, and they know we're representing Christ. Even though we don't get to share very much, as much as we'd like to, we are representing Christ, and we are breaking down barriers. And it just encouraged me to realize man, I'm truly bilingual. I'm multilingual. I can speak any language in the world. I really can. I can do it by these good deeds done in Jesus' name. And these people will see this and they will glorify God. And then it kind of opened up, like my head started to explode. I started thinking, what are some other ways I can speak a universal language? And I started thinking, you know, the Bible talks about laying on hands, laying hands on people. And there's nothing magical about that, but there's something about that. And I started realizing, you know what? That's probably another universal language, touch, touching people. I mean, they've done a lot of research on that. And, and so I made it a point, everybody that I could, as much, every distribution, I just put my hand on their shoulder, held their hand tight. I'm touching them, I'm speaking that language, man. I'm speaking that language. And then I got this, I think I'm going to call it epiphany. I started thinking, oh, I know another universal language, music. So, so I asked Pastor Vu after that service, I said, you can say no if this is not legal, I understand. I said, Pastor Vu, could we sing a gospel song after we do the distribution and the preaching? Would that be legal? Would you get in trouble? And he said, well, we've never done that before. He said, but uh, I, he said, I, let's do it. So at our last distribution, uh, we, we gave the chairs away. I preached, and then I said, before... Uh, we turned it over to the government official because they always want to do a little thing. I said, we're going to sing a gospel song for you. So I brought Roxana up and Mike Ruckdashel, and they sang Amazing Grace, first verse in English. And I brought the Vietnamese pastors up, and we sang the first verse again, only they sang it in Vietnamese so the people could understand that we sang in English. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God showed up. The Spirit of God showed up, man. And it was so incredible this uh, Vietnamese government official gets up and talks and they make these long speeches and I say to Pastor Vu after, what, what, uh, what did he say? Pastor Vu said, he said something I've never heard a communist government official ever say in my life. I said, what's that? He was telling them to be grateful for the chairs that we had brought, these Americans had brought, but he said, we are so thankful that these Americans are doing what God has told them to do. It's, it, it, that's incredible. He said, I've never heard of a government official even acknowledging that there is a God, because they are professed atheists. He said, on top of that, calling him out by name, that they are doing what God has told them to do. So, so this idea, this universal language, really set me free, man. And then we got to see this. A couple of the, the team asked about sharing this, but this, uh, I think all the team would agree, is this the absolute highlight, te highlight of the event team that all... The, was this, this is the most incredible experience, one of the most incredible experiences of my entire life, I saw this. We are in uh, the Fuquak Island, on the Fuquak Island, we're doing a distribution. The lady that we're praying for is the Red Cross director, community director, a uh, prestigious position, it's a government job. You cannot have that job unless you are communist, unless you clearly say you are not a Christian, none of your relatives are Christian, none of your distant relatives are Christian. I mean, this is who this lady is. She is so affected by our good deeds, she tells Pastor Vu, 
I want to become a Christian right now. Right then, right in front of us. I mean, it's just hard to, it's hard to grasp. This lady is putting herself seriously at risk here. I, I don't know. I mean, according to the rules, she loses her job. She prayed, Pastor Vu led her in a prayer. She's crying. She gets done. She says in Vietnamese, you're all my brothers and sisters. She's hugging us. She says, I'm a daughter of God. I'm thinking, I have never seen anything like that. A communist official, professed atheist, saved right in front of us. And it was just, it was rich, man. It was one of those life moments like, wow, I'm seeing something. I can hardly believe I'm seeing this. And then one last picture, and I'm going to finish up here. This is me shaking the hand of the uh, Buddhist monk. Uh, Jenny talked a little bit about this, but this Buddhist monk came to the distribution, asked Pastor Vu, he runs a Buddhist monastery and asked for some chairs. But I was just so conscientious of trying to speak the universal language. When I shook his hand, he looked at me and I looked right into his eyes with, with, with intention. And I said to him, Jesus loves you. And he, he teared up and I, I had an experience that I, I, I don't think I've ever had before in my entire life. I, I saw into his soul. I saw his soul. I saw his soul, and I saw the soul of a man who was trying to find God. He's a Buddhist monk. He's a religious man trying to find God, and his path is not satisfying him. And man, I know, I know we broke through. I know we spoke a universal language to this guy that, that we'll be able to see some fruit in the future just believe with all my heart that he's going to get saved someday. He's hungering for God, and we got to speak that language to him. So anyway, so I'm going to wrap it up there. I just want to say, in summary, absolute incredible trip. If you ever want to go on that trip, uh, you can easily talk to any of the people here that were on the trip. They'd love to share with you their journey. Uh, maybe invite them to talk at any of your care groups. they got pictures. Jenny's got pictures out front. Um, incredible thing and and I just also feel this morning to just say to you this idea of being able to speak universal language it, it goes beyond just being missionary some of you have got people in your life that you're trying to communicate with and you're not making much progress I mean you could be married to that person it could be your boss it could be a co-worker it could be a brother or sister it could be a neighbor and you're not making progress I'm here to tell you this morning there there is a way to break the language barrier there is a way and it really works you show them kind deeds in Jesus' name. If you can, you touch them, shake their hand. I'm not so sure about the music, though. <laughs> I don't know about singing to them, but <laughs> I'm just here to tell you, you can break the language barrier. You, you really can. It's, it works. That lady was converted right in front of our eyes because of us distributing these chairs and putting these people in these chairs. Something happened to her where she made a declaration, I want to be saved now, right now. So get ready for our offering next Sunday. This is our Easter offering. The entire offering goes toward the purchase of chairs, seventy-seven ninety-one, and uh, buys one chair. Everybody, please, everybody should buy one chair. Come on, one chair. You will transform a person's life for seventy-seven dollars and ninety-one cent. But I mean, come on. Some of us ought to be buying ten. That's seven hundred seventy-nine. Some of us should buy twenty. I think that's fifteen fifty buy these chairs this is a great investment you will change a person's life and if you can sometime in the future go on the journey it's an incredible experience so let's stand up and we're going to pray pray for our offering but uh wow 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 that's all i have to say wow so father i just want to ask right now holy spirit just i thank you for allowing us to be part of something that is so much bigger than we can even imagine. It's way beyond our comprehension, but we get to be a part of it. A small part, but a part of it, God, and we're so grateful. I thank you for our church, God, that we, as a family, purchased these chairs, and then we were able to send a team over that distributed them and, and touched these people and loved them and told them you love them, God. And Wow. And we pray for that lady, God, who gave her heart to you. God, we pray for protection for her. We pray for this Buddhist monk whose, whose soul you showed me, God. I saw his soul, empty, broken. This morning, God, that he would find himself hearing your name in his ear. Jesus. 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 Save him, God. Prepare us for this Easter week, God. 
prepare us for Good Friday, prepare us for uh, Easter morning. Let us come with hearts full of joy that, that we do know the Messiah, the Savior of the world. We have our ushers up front here. We're going to pray for our offering. Let's just stay in the presence of the Lord and let him just refresh you. The Bible talks about times of refreshing. Just come, Holy Spirit. we're facing in the name of Jesus. Just come, Holy Spirit. Just come. Just come, Holy Spirit. Just feel challenged to say, some of you need to lay your burdens down this morning. Just lay it down. He's capable. He is capable. God, I give it to you this morning. I'm letting it go. I'm not going to worry about it. front here. We're going to close with a song. A couple of things just really stirring in my heart. Um, just got a sense that there's some of you facing some uh, major change in your life. I, I'm getting this sense like career change. And uh, the Spirit's been stirring in you. And I just, I just get a sense this morning He wants to bring some confirmation. So if you're facing some major change, career change, the Holy Spirit's speaking this morning. Also got to send somebody struggling with uh, swallowing that, that reflux, some kind of reflux situation. Uh, somebody having really bad night terrors. So I just, you know, when I'm worshiping, I'm just trying to stay open to the Holy Spirit with words, and they pop into my head. I just tell God I'm going to put them out there. I believe when they come, it's the Holy Spirit saying He wants to, He wants to help you. This is that personal ministry time. If you have some special needs this morning, you'd like some prayer going to open it up. You're welcome to come up, get some prayer as we close with our last song. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, 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 to break every chain. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus.
Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain. There's power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Sing one more time, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love. thank you for your presence this morning. I pray that you would leave us changed today, that we would go, that we would be a light at our jobs, Lord God, that we would be a difference. Thank you for your blessings. Praise your name. Go in peace. We love you. Have a great week, and we'll see you back here Easter Sunday. Bring a guest. We're praying for all the guests and for all the family members. We love you.